All right, let's see how many questions we can answer in the shortest amount of time. So what I'm starting with is a uh, file called input.kml. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is try to get that into a DXF file using QGIS. Um, so I'm just going to drag that into QGIS. <coughs> And let's say I just I only want to bring in a couple of the layers. Uh, I'll bring in um, this map limits and this one called 1101 that I think is uh, just flight lines. So um, could add those to a group. Uh, let's go ahead and add that add those to a group just to show that. All right. <clears throat> so we've got those layers input. Um, typically when a KML comes in, it's going to come in in WGS84. So we can see the coordinates down here. We can see what we are displaying those at. Most of the things that uh, I am going to do are going to work better um, uh, ahead of time if I know what coordinate system I am going to be working in. First of all, let's just go ahead and change the um, the display projection and this one I know I'm going to want to display in Kentucky single zone so let's go ahead and select that and so now when I'm moving around in the coordinates um, I can see that uh, down here those are Kentucky single zone if I just want to take one layer and create a DXF of it, let's just take the uh, <clears throat> uh, the map limits. Uh, just the quickest way to do that would be to take and do a uh, right click on the layer and export and save feature as. And let's go ahead and uh, save this as uh, I'll put that DXF. And uh, for what I'm doing, a lot of the, the options just don't really make any difference. Uh, I'm going to not add this feature. So it's going to export a DXF. I can, exp I can add that DXF file to the project. I don't really want to do that. Uh, I do want to make sure that I am exporting it into the proper coordinate system. So let's just, we'll go ahead and say OK. So now there should be a output.dxf and hopefully, all right, we can see that the coordinate system is the same coordinate system. Uh, it's just a single polyline. So um, you can see that the it, it just dumps everything into layer zero and typically just for what I'm doing, I just want to get it from a KML into a DXF. So that's going to work fine. One thing I have found is that if I go up here and say uh, export the whole project as a DXF, every time I have tried it so far, this ends up in uh, WGS84 coordinates and it's just a mess. So there may be a way to, uh, to get that done I haven't figured it out, even though we'll see every dialog box appears to be doing that. Uh, the other thing is, um, a, a lot of the features that uh, work with the GDAL libraries um, will only export one layer to a uh, uh, to a DXF from a KML. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say vector data management tools, merge vector layers, because let's say I want to dump all these layers into a DXF file. Um, one thing I can do is merge those all together, and so I can take both of these layers and say, okay, we're going to merge those, and this is really helpful if when I DXF out the project, uh, this is the one thing that seems to uh, work. So let's go ahead and 
um, set this layer, the layer um, reference system is going to be uh, Kentucky single zone. I'm just going to create a temporary layer and I'm going to go ahead and uh, have it import it into the current project. So let's go ahead and run that. So now, um, and when I have a group, this happens a lot, it put my merged layer into that group. So I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the group. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this group and just um, delete it from the project. So now I've got one layer and the lines are in there. There is a an attribute based on the KML uh, something in the KML file. All right, so we can see that that uh, if I wanted to change the color of these based on the individual items, uh, one of the things that I can do is um, we're going to do a categorized color. We're going to base it on that value. We're going to go ahead and say classify to split those out. And then if I wanted to, let's go ahead and take um, my map limits and change those so they are very distinctive. It's okay. All right, so now we have got uh, uh, just you know I've done some manipulation on the screen. At this point, if I say project export as DXF, let's go ahead and. Um, Actually, let's go ahead and give this a different name. Output uh, project DXF. And this one defaults to Kentucky Single Zone. And I don't think the symbology scale for anything that I'm doing makes any difference. Um, I have not played with the symbology mode. Uh, let's just go ahead and leave that set to that because I don't want to spend a lot of time doing anything. Let's just say OK. It should have dumped out a DXF file, output project DXF. Let's take a look at that. All right, so now you can see the, uh, the colors reflected there. Uh, it used the name of the uh, group in the QGIS file as the name of the layer and the colors, it grabbed those from the uh, uh, from the attributes. So there we've got, and again, we can see the coordinate system down here. Everything looks good. So that DXF file should be fine. Uh, just for kicks, let's go ahead and turn off everything except the uh, project, or except for the map limits. And let's go ahead and add, uh, I don't know, maybe nape imagery. So let's add that layer to the project. And it's going to go ahead and add that. Let's go ahead and drop that below the limits. Okay, now uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, export an image. And uh, again, uh, a lot of things that I don't know or haven't tried, but I'm just going to, the, the thing that works the best for me. So let's say that I, I am going to want to export this at a certain scale, um, or I want to know the, the scale as I'm going in. So I'm going to say 1 to, to 24,000. All right, now what I want to do is export an, uh, this map as an image. All right, so this is really helpful if the map 
display is set to the reference system ahead of time because that's what it is going to export. So uh, that was one of the reasons I went ahead and set that ahead of time. And the scale, it's going to pull this uh, from uh, the map scale on the way in. Changing things in different orders really gets uh, seems to be a little problematic because what gets updated from what attributes. So this is just the way I do it. So I I set the scale on the map display uh, that comes in like that. Let's say I want a, a certain revolu uh, resolution. I'm going to go ahead and put that in next um, because I want lots of uh, pixels for this. So I'm going to set that to a thousand DPI. I am going to go ahead and draw the map extents on the canvas. So draw on canvas, that's going to go away. Let's go ahead and draw that. And just for kicks, a lot of times I will come in here and set everything to nice even numbers. All right, so by doing everything in that order, I have the extents that I want. Again, this, you know, those things, I just get used to the clicking and it just, you know, it, it's almost instant. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's save this as uh, um, image.tiff. And so we can see down here, this uh, little blue progress uh, it is not a progress bar, but it does show that something is actually happening. So what it's doing is, you know, obviously I've got the, the map limits, that was instant, but for the NAPE imagery, it has to pull that data in and render it. So that's what it's working on at the moment and it's doing it over Wi-Fi, so I'm not sure how long that's going to take. All right, that seemed to take about uh, a minute, maybe a minute and a half. So if I was to go back out to my folder, and look at image.tiff. I can see that I have got an image. It did render the map limits on there, so that's a, a nice way to burn vectors in to an image. And for Nate, that looks quite useful. All right, let's go ahead and close that image. Uh, all right, so we've got the, uh, the the everything I want to do in QGIS is there. Let's go ahead and look at a couple other things. So if I look in this folder, uh, I've got image, TIFF, input KML, output DXF, output project DXF. Um, if I wanted to, let's look at the uh, geo information on that TIFF file. So, uh, gdal info image.tiff, and let's. Uh... All right, so the most important things, you know, down towards the end of the file, uh, if we had a world file, you can see that the, uh, the pixel size is very nearly. To exactly two feet. The origin, all right, that's uh, probably the upper left hand corner. All right, and then you can see the uh, coordinates and just other metadata that uh, from inside that file. All right, so that is properly geo referenced as a geo TIFF. Now let's make a DXF out of that KML using the command line. Uh, this one, uh, as far as I know, uh, is, is only going to do one level. So first of all, let's find out what uh, uh, 
uh, or one grouping in the KML. So let's find out what groupings are in the KML. For this, I'm going to use OGR info input.kml. And I always, always mistype that as org info. GR, even though I said it out loud as I was typing it. So OGR info input.kml. And so it's going to list out the, the groupings that I have. Alright, so then I want to use the command line OGR to OGR minus F for file type or format, DXF. Uh, it's going to output it to OGR info or OGR KML dot DXF. I'm going to use input dot KML. Uh, the target uh, projection is going to be Kentucky single and the layer that I'm going to read is just map limits. So let's go ahead and run that. And let's look at our folder again. Now there's an OGR KML.dxf. All right, back to the, the layer zero. This is the exact same thing that I would have output if uh, when I did the uh, right click on the layer uh, save as DXF so we can see our coordinates are the way they're supposed to be uh, it's a single polygon uh, it's layer 0 and if I was going to dump this into any other format uh, just a, you know for a single line just almost instant uh, just reading it in All right, so a couple of different ways to export data using the GDAL tools.